Hello Grooming Lovers, it is Damian from Man's Best Friend channel again and today in my grooming salon we have this poodle mix, female and she is very very matted, she has mats on her ears, you can see the ear is pretty matted the head is also matted but I will be able to save the head because this top of the head is not, the muzzle is not matted but I don't know about the ears, they are pretty matted and the ears are matted even though I shaved them the last time she was here so if I do not shave the ears now, if I just brush all out and do the ears with scissors this dog is being groomed like once in six months if I don't shave the ear Next, the next time she comes in six months, the ears are going to be so matted and so painful for her, so I am going to shave them. Okay, you can see the body is also matted. It looks like it looks like the owner has done some grooming on the legs. So no doubts about it. I'm going to shave her with uh, eight and a half. But before I start, I want to take, I want to thank. Sherry Brookshire and Bonita Burl <coughs> for PayPal tips. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to take an eight and a half. She is a good dog, but <coughs> sometimes when I clip her nails or when I do something around her feet, she can snap. <coughs> and we know with no warnings, she can just turn her head pretty fast and try to snap me so I'm going to be careful around the nails when I get to that ok always start from a place that is not, that is not matted like this one you cannot start from the mat <coughs> because they're not cutting the mat, they're cutting under the mat where the new hair has grown and sometimes the dogs are matted all the way up to the skin and then can be very unpleasant for the dog and very hard to shave because they literally have to dig under the mat here and then you have to use a shorter blade so that it's safer for the dog The tail is not matted, I mean, yeah, it's not matted. Okay, one more thing, the owner told me not to shave the sanitary area because it gets very very itchy and red when I shave it so I'm going to do that area with scissors The number one rule in grooming is when you're doing some part of the body, don't skip to the other part if that area is not done, if you can do it, because, and that is the rule <laughs> I don't listen to very often and very often I start grooming one leg then, and then I start grooming the other and that is bad because you should always finish one area and then go to the other it, may, it makes the grooming faster 
because when you start doing that like a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there you start losing yourself you don't know what's finished or what's not so that is my tip for today even though I don't stick to that rule very often <laughs> Okay, so this area has to be done with the clipper and it's not the same if you do it with the eight and a half or seven and with the 15 or 10 because the shorter the you leave the hair it is more chance that it's going to be itchy for the dog Okay, so in this area I'm also going to use an eight and a half as last as I can but this area is very matted. So okay we'll see about that later. Okay the blade is not hot because I oiled it and sprayed it before I started. And guys, I have to tell you that I'm very, very glad that I started this channel and that I started this YouTube journey. And it was always my dream to make money from YouTube because it was always fascinating to me how some people earn money from YouTube and you're literally earning money while you're sleeping, while you're on the holidays, while you're, I don't know, eating, drinking coffee or doing whatever. And that was always fascinating and I was always attracted to that. And I had, as I told before, several attempts, not several, but many, many attempts. This channel was a fitness channel before, in 2014. I made a fitness channel because I was going to the gym very often and I had good results. I was not a competitor, but for my age, I was pretty good. And so I made a fitness channel where I uploaded and I uploaded videos. It was in my native language, Serbian. And when you talk, when your viewers are from Serbia, your RPM and CPM are very very low and for example you get uh, 0 0.1 dollars for, for 1000 views or sometimes 0 0.05 dollars or 0 0.03 dollars for 1000 views which is I think very little very very bad but that's not the reason why I quit. I mean, I could talk in English as I do now. But the main reason is that I realized that I like fitness. I mean, I love fitness. And I hope that fitness is always going to be a part of my life. Even though I had a big break from training. But it's not the same to love fitness and to do fitness and be fit and to be a fitness youtuber and coach and i realized that i don't like it 
to I tried several things on YouTube, many things I tried making fail compilation videos, I tried making oddly satisfying videos, I tried like hacks, life hacks I tried, I also have an attempt of making a picture compilation videos I tried a lot of things I tried drawing caric caricatures of football players I mean it was all for a few months but the funny thing is, is when I was trying all of that I was zooming I was zooming but I was like oh my grooming is not that good who is going to watch me groom it is better to try something else and then I decided to upload grooming videos and that's my story so if you want to be a youtuber I highly recommend that you try I have to say that I had a lot of hate from my, even my best friends while I was trying my YouTube fitness thing actually I lost a lot of friends because of that and but it all paid out so it's going to be pressure at the beginning that's for sure but all I can say to you is be patient and don't give up Because YouTube is really a great platform to earn money and to promote your work or, or do whatever you want. It is great and it it will it hopefully it will stay that way. You know that some people say, oh what you're going to do if YouTube does not exist anymore? Well I don't think that YouTube exists for, I don't know, like 15 years now or more or less, I don't know exactly, but I don't think that YouTube will stop existing or something like that. Okay, so there's some matting on her head, but I don't want to shape her head, but some mattings like this. I have to shave them. Yeah, I'm going to make a cute short head for her because a lot of hair is already shaved.
Okay, so, so she's doing great today. I'm going to take the, my, eight, my, my other 8 and a half blade. This one got a little warm. So as I said about YouTube, if you're planning on making a YouTube channel, my best advice to you is to talk in English. One more thing that I noticed, this is a difference between the audience from when I was filming the fitness videos and now when I'm filming grooming videos. Okay, of course, before when I was grooming, when I was filming. fitness videos the main gender was male and now like 75% of my viewers are females so ladies thank you for that and And, I, and also, I have more adult viewers, which makes me glad, because when I was filming fitness videos, I had a lot of kids commenting, and I mean, I had no problem with that, but you can really see the difference between the those comments and these comments, because these view my viewers are normally not kids. Kids are not interested in grooming that much. I mean, it is much better for kids to watch a fitness channel than a gaming channel. Now there are tons and tons of gaming channels. And I think that I mean, so that I think I know that kids are spending too much time in front of their PCs and mobile phones and... It's not good. Okay, so this groom is going pretty, pretty smooth. She's doing great. And I'm taking piece, piece by piece of this method here and she's probably feeling much better now. And I, mean, I mean, she's probably feeling better and better. In this video I decided to film the bath, but not the drying. I realized that the drying is probably boring. Okay. I don't know the name of this plant in English, but it is a very, very dangerous because it can get in your dog's nose, your dog's skin, and there were cases that it gets in the dog's skin and gets through the skin and into the dog's lungs because 
the structure of that plant is like that. It can go in, but it cannot go out. So I don't know if you have these plants in the place where you live, but be careful. Okay, so she's going pretty good. Okay, I'll just have to do this area with the clipper, no doubts about it. Hopefully she will get itchy, but it is pretty massive and I have to take it off, it's going to be cleaner and easier to maintain and there's no matted hair because urine can easily, easily get in that matted hair and you don't want to, your dog to carry urine on that hair. It's bad for the dog and it's bad for you because that dog is in your house and You don't want urine all over your place. Okay, so you can see it's pretty matted, but see. So that's it for the before the bed shave down. Of course, I'm going to shave her again after. Let me just check her ears. She does not have that much hair, and this dirt can be washed. You have to pick this here, to plug this here because. When there's no hair in the ear canal, as there is now, it allows the ear to breathe, and when the ear can breathe, it decreases the chances of an ear getting infected. So yesterday, I had a 19-year-old dog. Nine, 19. Of course, it is a mixed breed. And it was a small size mixed breed. A female, she can hear uh, just a little bit, and she's not totally blind, but she has, of course, problem with her sight. And she was here for a nail, nail clipping, and she did great. But a 19 year old dog. It is a really, really rare case, but I know that it's ha it happens. Okay. So I decided I am going to fill the bed, but I'm not going to fill the drying. Okay. 
just set my yeah this is my girlfriend's apron that why has flowers and she's a great girl as you can see no professional bathtubs no professional bathing systems just an old school bathtub and a lot of you had commented like something like I'm grooming for 40 years and I don't have a professional bathing system or a professional bathtub so don't worry about that and I'm not worrying about that of course it is easier to groom with uh, to bathe with when you have a professional bathing system or a bathtub that can be lifted up or down don't worry I disinfect everything okay Okay, so this is a uh, Chris Christensen. Mm, what is the name? Hydrating blend, blending, something like that. This is a shampoo. I'm going to shampoo her twice, and then I'm going to apply the conditioner. And this, yeah, this is hydrating blend. And this. Shampoo is great. You can see this is the conditioner. I'm not the conditioner. This is the concentrated shampoo. This is a diluted shampoo. And dog shampoos come concentrated. And this shampoo is very concentrated. And that's why it's called Smart Wash 50 because one piece of shampoo goes to 50 pieces of water if you understand what I'm talking and this is it is pretty concentrated but and it is a professional shampoo it's a great shampoo And because it is so con concentrated, even though it is the best, it get it when you calculate everything, it's pretty much much the cheapest shampoo, and it's great. And the thing that really annoys me is that a gallon, a gallon of this shampoo in America probably cost like. 50 40 to 50 dollars if you know the price please, please tell me in america where it, the minimum paycheck is like i don't know exactly i think that it's at least 1000 dollars or something like that and in serbia where the minimum paycheck is 350 dollars a gallon of this shampoo cost more than $70 and that's pretty much the story about Serbia and the prices in, of some things in Serbia it is very very sad and the conditioner cost like $60 for a gallon but the conditioner is not, not that concentrated the conditioner is like one piece of conditioner to eight pieces of water I think that it's something like that so I normally spend a few conditioners with one shampoo if you know what I'm talking I have to buy a few conditioners a 
I mean, I'm using a few conditioners, a one shampoo lasts for the same time. Okay, so this was the first bathing, and this this cosmetic smell really, really nice. It has some soft smell. It's not too strong. You don't want a too strong smell on your dog. The dog do not like it. Their sense of smell is much, much stronger than ours. And if you put something on them that has a strong smell, it's going to bother them a lot. And it's going to bother them much, much more than if you color your dogs here. Because coloring your, your dogs here, it's not going to do, maybe not even any bad to the dog. Because dog, for the do um, dogs, don't, hmm. Those dogs don't see that much colors. And I'm going to talk in, about that in some other videos more deeply. But... At first people thought that dogs are color blind. And... Actually, they're not colorblind, but they, they cannot detect that much colors as, as humans can. So, if you think that you, if you paint your dog's tail or the ears or some part of your dog, and that it is going to be that that go, dog is not going to be accepted by other dogs, that they're going to look at him the other way, they probably won't even notice it because dogs notice smells and not the looks you know when you're walking a dog and you meet with someone who is also me who is also walking a dog your dogs are probably going to start sniffing one another they're not going to start and look if this one has this color or that color because they don't recognize colors as we do. I don't know exactly what colors do they do they see, but so as I heard that people started coloring the dogs here because some dogs had like social problems and were probably afraid of people and something like that and they like I think that their dog psychologist thought of Paint, not painting like <laughs> dyeing the dogs in some colors would be great because then people on the street will pay attention to this dog stop and look at that dog maybe pet him and the dog will feel better because he's in the center of attention and I don't know I don't do I don't paint the dogs I don't color the dogs I think that it's not necessary because people are not going to do that for the socialization of the dog, but for the for their own good. And I don't do that, that's my opinion. I don't hate that someone does it. But as I said, it all started with trying to help a dog. I mean, it's not that it started like that, but it can be in that purposes. So, sorry guys, my not, sorry girls, <laughs> because 
my English is not that good and I'm just I don't know but as I said I don't do I don't color the dogs I think that it's too much I also think that there are other ways for dogs to socialization yeah some water gets in the ear it's not the end of the world it's I mean you should be careful make sure that as less water as you can you get to the dog's ear but if some water gets in make sure that you dry the ear after the bath please don't think that the ear is going to be infected as soon as the water gets in because what if your dog goes on swimming pool or swims in the river or under the sea of course that some water is going to get in like water gets in our ears we just have to make it dry and the thing i normally do is after the drying i take the cotton wool and dry the ear canal okay so this dog is going pretty great the last time she was really she was cranky maybe because i was shaving her paws like poodle feet and she snapped a few times but this time she's doing great. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, this is what I normally do. I put the dog in the towel and okay, we grow and let the towel soak it up for a few minutes. So I just, I'll just do that and I'll see you after the drying. Okay, so I dried her up. You see her body is dry and her head and the tail are like 70 to 80 percent dry and because I have to brush the head and the tail under the blow dryer you always have to brush the area that you're going to do with scissors I mean that you're going to leave longer and it is much easier to do it under the blow dryer I'm holding my finger on her ear canal to close the ear canal so she won't get unpleasant weird air blowing into her ear
Okay, so the head is done. And now I have to brush her tail. You can see there's some matting here, just to make this tire. Okay, so the tail is brushed out too. Let's see how fluffy it is. And the thing I was talking about, these are the cotton wool, cotton wool pads, cotton pads, and in case some water got in, I just want to make sure that the ear canal is dry. So when that is done, I have to do her nails and the paw pads. And as I said, she can get cranky about me touching her feet. So this thing is big for her, as you can see. But, and it's not choking her, of course. And I normally take a color and put it between this coal and make it tighter, but hopefully I won't be needing this at all. Okay. So some of the nails look fine, like they don't need to be clipped, which is great. Yeah, this paw is done. Okay, so the nails on her back feet look fine, they, uh, they don't need to be clipped. So I'm leaving this just to finish the pop pad. This is a 15 blade. No, it is a 30, sorry.
one more left. <clears throat> Okay, so the pole pads are done. I wasn't needing this, but I put it just in case. And let's finish her. First, I'm going to scissor around the pads, around the poles, sorry. Okay, yeah. Let's take the seven blade and shave her again.
Okay. As I said, I'm going to scissor around her a little bit. The owner does not like it being shaved. The owner said that she scratch that she, that she gets very itchy and scratches it. Okay. Okay, so let's finish her body. I'm going to take this off.
see, so the body is done. A little bit more. And let's do her front legs now. Okay, so I'm done with shaving her again, just a little bit around the head. Guys, sorry for the noise. Some of you asked, is maybe my blade driver? bad and this is actually a blade driver this thing and this thing moves this blade it gets between in this hole and moves this blade like that and eventually it gets thinner and thinner and you have to change it and when it gets thinner the clipper gets more loud but i changed it like a month ago Maybe I'll have to change it again. I don't know. I don't know if my blades are old. I mean, they work great, but I don't know it is, if it is because of them or the driver or the clipper. This is an expensive clipper. The blades are also expensive. I don't know what's going on, but sorry about the noise. And my neighbor is also drilling, so it makes the noise even worse. So. Sorry. <laughs>
Okay, na jetzt suche ich den. Sorry. Okay, let's do her ears first. I'm holding my fingers at the end of the skin so I not cut the ear.
Okay, let me just text the owner and let them know that we're done soon. Okay, let's finish her little head. I'm going to comb this forward. I'm going to do her head with comb attachment.
Okay, so the upper part of the head is done. And all I have to do now is do the muzzle. And she's done, she can go home. You have to call the dog's mouth close when you're doing the hand and mouth. You don't want them licking the scissors or something like that. It can happen.
Okay, I think that she is done and I think that she looks cute. Let me know what you think. And yeah, that's it for this video. I'm going to let her shake it up. Okay, this is maybe too tight. And yeah, she did great. She's a good dog and now she's great. She's not matted. <laughs> and yeah, she always does that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me in every way. And I will definitely see you soon. Bye.